Okay, what are the headlines? I had the pleasure of speaking with Dave Budge in Australia, co-founder, CEO of Jaunt, that is Jaunt Motors. He is converting Land Rovers into electrical vehicles. Now, I drove a Land Rover in the army quite a while ago. I love Land Rovers. First headlines, Sky saying there could be global warming of four Celsius by the end of the century, all despite all the pledges made at the COP26 climate summit. Um, the research is coming from the University of Exeter and the Met Office, and they say that the aim of limiting warming to 1.5 Celsius, that is above pre-industrial levels, is slipping out of reach. Then, an article by Klaus Lechner in The Conversation. Um, he is Professor of Engineering, Director of the Center for Negative Carbon Emissions at Arizona State University. He's talking about machines scrubbing greenhouse gases from the air, which sounds very promising. And they have an inventor of direct air capture technology showing how it works. Now, they talk about the tech and they also talk about the downsides, which at this point is the cost and the fact that it's very energy intensive. OK, then we have fish.org uh, mentioning another reason to save the Amazon, their article. Understanding rare, intense rain events in the driest desert on Earth. That's the Atacama Desert in northern Chile. A study from Christoph Böhm proposes that the water travels from the tropical Amazon across oceans and mountains to reach the desert. And research uh, shows that 40 to 80 percent of the total uh, precipitation that occurs between the coast and the Andean foothills is associated with moisture conveyor belts. OK, Matador Network has an article, Study Confirms Producing Electric Vehicles Emits Fewer Emissions Than Producing Traditional Cars. And their prediction is that the gas-powered car will be all but obsolete in the garages of Americans by 2030. OK, please don't forget to subscribe and to like Sustainable News. Um, by the way, this leads me into my conversation with Dave Budge. And um, he is in Australia and he's a co-founder, he's CEO of Jaunt, that is Jaunt Motors. And uh, he's converting Land Rovers into electrical vehicles, and which I drove. Well, not the electrical vehicle one, but a Land Rover in the army. That was mandatory military service in the Netherlands. I really love them. Yeah, but they are a little bit uncomfortable. They're really bad for the environment. At the same time, they have this sense of freedom, this sense of adventure attached to them. So I really, really like them. So here's Dave, and he converts these vehicles um, into EVs, into electrical vehicles. Um, so almost like recycling or upcycling. But at the same time, he's keeping that spirit, that sense of adventure in the vehicles. Um, so I asked him quite a few questions. Um, what attracts him to these vehicles and why the EV, the electrical vehicle conversion? The, the shape of that vehicle, whether you call it a Jeep or a Land Cruiser or whatever, mm -hmm. it is such an iconic shape that it triggers some kind of nostalgia in, in people. And it, it be, means both an old car, but it also means sort of adventure and all, all of the things that I guess car companies these days spend a lot of money to try and get you to believe that their car is freedom and adventure and all of these things. I think old Land Rovers genuinely have that. The car that they have that they now own that's been electrified was the car that used to live over that hill over there and helped plough that field or fight that bushfire. Or It's got a history of place and that the car individually has history rather than knowing the brand and the details and all of that kind of stuff that becomes part of, I guess, car culture. Cars to normal people, to most people, have their own personality. And I think for us, if we can create a car that feels like it belongs, because it truly has spent 50 years in, in, that, in that town, in that part of the world, has been rebuilt and is being then powered by locally generated electricity, uh, and, and without having uh, having a very very small footprint on the environment, that's as close as you can get to a to a vehicle belonging. Now I understand that you have a partnership with the Bendigo uh, Tech School. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? 
So they were starting an uh, electric mobility program mm-hmm. and they got in contact with us because they would have, they were like, our dream version would be to create, uh, to work on a project where we could build a, a, a full road legal electric vehicle. Uh, their program, which is their girls in uh, STEM, so girls in science, technology, um, uh, engineering and maths, is a program. So it's basically uh, girls who we'd, we'd say they would be in year 10. So that means they're about 15. Um, they're, they're running a program where they're the project managers, they're sourcing all the things, they're doing a lot of the labour themselves, they're restoring an old Range Rover. Uh, we're providing the electric vehicle systems, which they'll install they're working with uh, partners. So Bendigo is a town of um, about 150,000 people. Okay. Um, and so a small, a small town, but, but, but big enough to have all these facilities. Uh, they're working with them to, to restore with, you know, private enterprise and government to restore the vehicle. That vehicle will then be uh, available to rent uh, for anyone outside of the train station. So there's a lot of tourism comes in at the train station and then there'll be this electric vehicle that's there charging uh, and available to rent for anyone. So it's a sort of an 18 month long project, but it's it's quite exciting because obviously it's a cool program that I wish I could have done at school, mm-hmm. but it's, it's, you know, you can, an electric vehicle and, and any, any electric vehicle, I'm obviously talking about we build stuff that's, you know, large and carries people and puts them on the road, but the technology scale down is exactly what's in a in a drone for example or a skateboard so the principles of running an electric motor and managing the batteries and charging it are the same it's just a really nice thing to work on a car scale because you can get a whole group of people to work on it at once mm-hmm. and it's very easy to understand rather than being microelectronics. now i spoke with aaron Bumons and he told me that you asked the uk royal family to donate some laros did they do that in the end <laughs> no no so um so we were part of a uh when we were a very early startup and, and you know really we were just a powerpoint presentation and not much more um we were selected as part of a as a, as a startup to to pitch at um at this thing at the government house here and you know the the big thing was that they uh, because it had sort of royal patronage, they, they, they wanted to make sure that it didn't seem like it was just about money, like any other startup pitch. It was about connections and influence and all this kind of stuff. Well, um, we're assuming they love Land Rovers. They have a lot of them. Uh, there's plenty of pictures of the Queen driving around in one. So surely they've got some spares that they would like to uh, donate for the cause. But uh, no, it never it never went anywhere. I never We never got a, uh, a confirmation or a, re- a proper reaction from that request. Okay, what difference does this make? EVs, are they really good for the environment with carbon footprints? What about the batteries? Could that be a problem? Are these just obstacles that most likely will be solved in the future? Uh, Yes, is the the answer. Mm -hmm. But I hesitate because obviously the vehicles that we're building are not uh, necessarily someone's alternative to... Uh, you know, it's not their primary car, for example. So when we're building cars that are someone's second car, can we really say that someone having a second car or a third car is great for the environment? I'm not sure. But in terms of electric vehicles as a whole, completely, in every way, in any measure, in any study, they are better for the environment and, and better no matter where you live and how your energy is generated. So So there's those few arguments where the you know, the creation of the the components. So the, the motor, uh, you know, might be rare earth magnets in that motor. There's obviously the, the lithium or the cobalt in the batteries, all those chemicals in the batteries, the manufacturing and, and construction of those batteries. Uh, and, and what we're seeing is the industry moving towards much, much cleaner, better battery chemistry including things like sodium ion batteries, which is literally so salt, right? And so, so there's, there's battery technology that as the world electrifies, and if we think by 2050, every single vehicle is going to be electric basically on the road everywhere, it's a better technology. Now, for us, I'd say that, uh, like, you know, on one hand, I say that we are, we, we are at the moment creating cars that are an additional car for the most part for people. 
However, we are recycling batteries. So the batteries that we're putting in our vehicles are all from Teslas that have crashed, basically. So, so the, you know, there's, you're able to reuse a lot of this technology. And there's a lot of companies now that are also not just recycling the, the metals in batteries, but refurbishing the batteries and bringing them back to 80% and beyond of their original capacity 